But yeah, let's get into it. So the graduation report. Uh, we have uh, recently updated our website. So uh, if you go to our regular Metams um, help desk page, you won't find that anymore, actually, if you had it bookmarked. So you would want to go back to the regular uh, main.gov forward slash DOE website. And then uh, it's still up top under data and reporting. But now our tile is Metam support rather than help desk. And uh, there's the URL uh, to get directly there now. And then we uh, the updated tiles is now under the uh, student data entry reporting section there. And then you'll see all the familiar links that you'd seen before. But just some new navigation as we kind of streamline things and get them going a little bit better. And um, so uh, the purpose of the graduation report is to allow you guys a chance to look at uh, who you have marked as graduates for the previous school year. And these numbers um, are going to be based off an adjusted cohort graduation rate, which we'll explain on the next slide. Uh, but this is what we're using for the ESSA data dashboard when we post uh, graduation rates up there, uh, as well as what we're sending over to the feds. Uh, so we do a rate for uh, four, five, and six year graduates. And to expand on that a little bit, let's see if we'll go, what's going on? There we go. So the adjusted cohort graduation rate basically is a fancy term for saying that we're taking into account any students that transfer out of your district um, or uh, transfer in during their high school career. So if a kid um, you know, goes out of state, we remove them from your graduation cohort so they're not counting against your rates. Um, same thing if they're moving, you know, in and out throughout the state to different SAUs, we'll be kind of removing them from folks reports, putting them on other, uh, other reports, but that's all contingent on, um, how you've enrolled them, um, in synergy. So, and then the other thing to know with the report is, uh, the cohort year, uh, effectively when you get to the report, there's, um, as we mentioned, the four or five and six year report. Uh, those are effectively your class of 2024, uh, class of 2023, and class of 2022. Um, so they've got basically, you know, six years to meet requirements, and that's how we break them down. Uh, however, it's based off whatever their first high school enrollment is in the state. So if they come in from out of country as a, say, 10th or, uh, or yeah, say, as a 10th grader, then they essentially have three years until we would expect them to graduate. So we'll set their cohort three years out. Um, if they end up repeating 10th grade the following year, um, that doesn't change anything. They were still expected to graduate three years out. Uh, that's usually the one of the main hangups for folks um, is if they have students repeat a grade or let's say if they did a did ninth grade as a as home instruction and then they started to you know come to high school, but you start them in ninth grade. Um, you know, they would still be considered uh, that original cohort that they were set. So, but let's get uh, going through it here. Now, the report uh, has actually been open. Some of you may have noticed it's been open since July 1st. Uh, that way you can see, because if now that the school year has ended, you'll be able to see who you've marked as a graduate. So it's been open. Um, we have right up until August 15th here. And then, uh, because that is the last day for our summer graduates to meet requirements. So once we pass that day, we now know exactly who should be the graduates and we can allow you to cer uh, certify the reports. So that will begin on the 16th of August. And then we're hoping to have everybody in by the end of August. So um, it really, you've had, you'll have pretty much two months to go through it. You know, everybody that, uh, got their diplomas already, should already be marked in Synergy. And then you're really just waiting on any of those um, students that are working throughout the summer to graduate. But once again, they only have until the 15th to do it. So if they haven't done it by the 15th, you should have a complete picture by the 16th and then two weeks to have them go in and certify it. And right here's the slide for summer graduates. Um, so if you do have a student that um, you know, didn't didn't make it in June, 
but they went ahead and they got everything done by the 15th or before the 15th. Um, then you can go ahead and just go and update their last exit status with you in Synergy uh, to graduated 01921. And then that will get them counted on the report. And uh, once again, this report is only looking at students uh, for the 23 24 school year. So it does need to be that last June exit. That's uh, you know, June 30th is the last day of that reporting window. So it ne we need to see it uh, within the reporting window for it to count. And we move through here. Uh, we got a quick little pop quiz. Uh, so if we have a student uh, that completes graduation requirements on 815, uh, but you weren't told about it as the, the data person until the 16th, and we've already gone ahead and rolled Synergy over to the 24-25 school year, uh, what do you need to do to make sure that they're getting counted as a graduate for 23-24? As you can see, we've got some options. Uh, you can add a one day enrollment in school year 24 25 for 8 15, 8 16 with the exit code of graduated. You can swap your focus and synergy back to last school year, update their code to graduated. You can call or email the help desk, have us uh, update their code. Or you can put the graduation date right into the Neo Grad module. So let's think about that for a second. If you're feeling, uh, participatory you can type it in the chat if you want i know we had uh, some fancy polling stuff but i'm filling in for ali i'm not sure how to get that going so but if you think about it for a second and in this instance uh since we've rolled synergy forward you guys will no longer have access to 2324 uh, but we at the help desk will still be able to do that so you will give us, us a call or an email. Just say, hey, um, you know, I just found about this student. Um, you know, they did make the requirements. Can you update their code to graduated? We'll go sure thing. We'll go back to their June exit and just flip the exit status over to graduated for you. So something very good to know. Uh, right now, though, um, while we still have Synergy open for another 10 days, uh, you guys can go right in and just change those exit statuses as needed. But after the 15th and we roll it, then just give us a call or email. And then this is just a little bit of a flow chart for folks. Um, so mostly just a refresher on how this stuff gets to us. Um, so more or less, everything starts with your local uh, student information system. And you guys are going in there and you know putting in your, your coding for, for students, and then once you have it in your local SIS, then uh, so you're either doing the send to state option or you're manually uploading a file to us or somebody's hand entering it right into Synergy. Uh, that's getting it into that system. And then from there, every hour, we do a data pull from Synergy over to NEO. Uh, so once again, Synergy just collects the student data NEO is what turns that student data into the certifiable reports. And then once NEO has it, then um, after that hour, then you'll you'll see the change reflected. And uh, the thing to know about the graduation report is it only cares about the exit code 01921. So that is the graduated with uh, regular baccalaureate high school diploma. Um, so if they completed their high set, if they got an equivalency certificate, if they got a uh, certificate of completion from their uh, special purpose private program, um, none of those are what we are looking at for this reporting. They have to get a high school diploma to be a quote graduate as far as the feds are concerned. So if uh, just keep that in mind. Um, students, however, if they do get like their high set GED, uh, while they will not be considered a graduate, they will also not be considered a dropout. When we get to that reporting in October, um, that is a completely separate report though. Graduation and dropout have nothing to do with each other. They are their own complete separate entities uh, with their own reporting windows tracking their own uh, exit codes. So 
don't confuse grads and dropouts. Um, they can, a student can be a student can be a grad and a dropout, uh, or they could be neither or both, um, even sometimes multiple years in a row. So uh, don't uh, think too much on that and just let the reporting do what the reporting needs to do. And now we'll go through just some basic navigation, getting you over to the report in NEO. Um, you will need to have NEO student data access to get here. So when you log into NEO, if you do not have student data as an option up top and you're going to be tasked with doing this report, uh, just reach out to your superintendent, have them fill out an access request, and then we can get that added onto your account. But once you have it on your account and you log in, you'll have student data up top there. Going into student data, you can go into student reports. This will bring you to our lovely wall of reporting. And graduation is about halfway down. So you might not even be able to see with the navigation bar, but it's about halfway down. Grad there's a graduation details report and a graduation certification report. So depending on what you want to look at, um, the certification report will be uh, give you your totals which we'll see in a second. And then the detail report will give you, uh, bring you to the, the individual uh, reports to show you the students. But if we go into the certification report, it'll look like this. We'll have a breakdown of your completers, four, five, and six year and their rates. And then this is where the button to certify submit to DOE will be for your superintendent. And if we start going through each of these various detail reports, starting with the completers, uh, this report is going to be a all-inclusive list of every student that you had enrolled in the 23-24 year that was marked as a graduate. So it doesn't matter what grade they're in. Um, when the enrollment was, it's just if we see an enrollment from July 1st, 2023 20, through June 30th, 2024, and that enrollment was marked as graduated, they'll be on this report. So this is just a way for you to see everybody all at once. And as you'll see, we've got some different cohort years and things in here. Um, we've got some six, five, and four years all on it. And then, um, as with each of the reports, we've got some different ways you can kind of navigate, search it, export it. Um, you can filter on the columns by clicking on the, the arrows next to the column. Um, if you want to search for an individual student, you can go ahead and do that. It'll live filter the list for you. Uh, or if you prefer, you can just um, port this out to Excel and then work through it that way. Um, just be aware if you do um, do the export to Excel option, Obviously, your Excel spreadsheet, once you export it, it is no longer updating with anything you do in Synergy. Um, you, some of you may be surprised, but there'll be a lot of folks that'll print this at the beginning of <laughs> when they start working through it, and then um, and then they'll ask email us questions after they fix things. And you know, it's because your Excel your Excel sheet is static once you export it. So um, just be aware of that as always. But that's the completers report. Uh, moving on, we got the four year report. So this one, uh, as I alluded to earlier, is effectively going to be your class of 2024, if you want to think of it that way. So it's going to have every student that we believe, based on their cohort, should have graduated this year. So whether they graduate or not, uh, they're on the report. But the key will be uh, this graduation date column, which I believe it'll highlight here in a second. Nope. Okay. Uh, but it is all it's all about the graduation date column. Uh, you'll see it's about halfway right in the middle. So if that if that column is blank, then it means that they have not been marked as a graduate. They're not getting counted. Um, those are probably the ones you want to look at. And yeah, you will you will see everybody just on here and then some various demographic breakdowns. And then um, yeah, and then same thing for the five-year report. So once again, this is just uh, the class of 2023. So this is all the students that should have graduated last year. And if any of them are continuing, you know, for a fifth year, um, you'll see them here as well. 
And then same thing on the six year is your class of 2022. Uh, so all of them will be on here and then graduation dates are not. And then that's what you'll be looking at. And we get another pop quiz time. So uh, these are Allie Cookson's uh, names. So we'll we'll just go with it. But we've got a uh, Pegasus Magnolia graduated and received a diploma on June fifteenth, but the graduation date's blank on the four year grad detail report. So when you go back into Synergy and and look at their exit date, uh, it says they're exited for six fifteen with code non enrolled eligible to return. 03502. So what would you do here? This is probably the main thing that you'll be doing is you'll see kids that you know aren't marked as graduates. You'll go in synergy, see they're not marked. And then you've got some options. Um, you can either not worry about it. Uh, hey, they're on the graduate report. They just don't have a date. Uh, you can contact someone in the district who can verify that the student graduated with a diploma. You can then update the exit code from not enrolled eligible to return to graduated and wait for the hourly refresh to upload the data into NEO. Or you can do both B and C in that order. So let's get you type in some answers. I think this one a little more obvious than the other one. Um, yeah, if you if you see a student doesn't have their graduation date, um, obviously, yeah, your first thing should be to confirm what their status was. Um, unless you know, unless you're the person uh, you know handing out the diplomas, and you know for a fact that they got one, um, then you can maybe skip that part. But um, yeah, you should always verify, and then if you're once you're certain, then you can go ahead and update their exit code. And then, uh, as always, if you are getting to this after August 16th, then you can just shoot the email or call to the help desk, and we can do that for you. But for the next 10 days, you'll be able to just update those fields uh, all on your own. And so, yeah, just a couple more points here, just to, which we kind of already talked about. Uh, once again, keep in mind that the, a student's cohort is identified by their first enrollment in a main high school. Um, and that might be where some of your issues come up, uh, but you do have a way to troubleshoot that. If you go and look at the student's uh, enrollment history tab in Synergy, you know, where it shows all of their previous enrollments, basically just go ahead and look at whatever their first 9 through 12 enrollment showed up and what year that was. Uh, sometimes those are erroneous um, and sometimes we can fix them, but sometimes, you know, like if they if they did a, a, a whole year of ninth grade at, a, say, uh, one of the private schools up here, and then they transferred to public school and then you guys had them repeat ninth grade. Um, you know, sorry, they uh, they already did a full year of ninth grade, so they get they're they're getting tracked, you know, they get four years just like everybody else. So they're gonna be um they'll be expected to have graduated um, you know, say this year where you're you where you kind of have them slated to graduate next year based on your own um thing. So there's nothing we'll we'll do about that, but sometimes you know, a school will put in like a uh, an accidental like one day enrollment and they'll you know typo the grade or something accidentally put them in you know 10th grade when they should have put them in ninth grade and uh, things like that we can fix if there's no obvious like educational time spent um, in that grade so we can help you fix those types of things but just know that not all of them need to be fixed and um, the other thing to know that's also coming up uh, pretty often is the uh, doe diplomas um, so the DOE disruption diplomas, uh, people like to call them the COVID diplomas, but we've had these for years and years and years, way before COVID was ever an inkling. Um, so the DS DOE disruption diplomas, those um, you guys will want to just code them as a graduate because uh, it is a it is a high school diploma that they're getting. It's just from us. So go ahead and code them 01921. And yeah, we're more or less at the end. Uh, here's just our contact info in case you guys need it. Once again, uh, metams.helpdesk at main.gov, uh, the website and our phone number. But at this point, we'll just kind of open it up for questions and uh, we'll see what we can answer for you folks. 
And let me, I'm going to try to switch my window here. So I apologize if the presentation goes down for a moment. I think I have it sharing the window, so I think we're going to be okay. But I just want to open it over here so I can see any questions that came in. Okay. So yeah, we have a we have a good question. So uh, someone was asking, just you know, uh, what? So what if a student didn't complete a full year of ninth grade at another school, but they did transfer mid year? Um, or oh, that would no. Okay, so they they didn't complete a full year at another school, but then next the following year they came in as ninth grade again. Would that change the cohort? Um, honestly, if it was for like a month or two months or something, um, it it would not change the cohort. So it would only be it's really only the cases of if it's like a one day enrollment and um, if it if it makes sense, you know, because we can see their their history. So if they went sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, and then they kind of and then they left mid year of that ninth grade, but then they came back for ninth of the following year. You know, it's it's pretty clear that, you know, they're they were kind of on track and that's that's where they should be. So we would leave the cohort in that exact scenario. But um, yeah, I don't see. I think we got the other question. Yeah, someone was just confirming that we're not using one day enrollments. Um, and that's correct. For, assuming you're talking about a 24, 25, you know, if you try to do a July 1st, a 2024 enrollment to Markham has graduated. Uh, Yep, that this year's graduation report that is only looking up until June 30th, 24, it will not see it. They will be next year's graduate, um, which is what will be the case. Um, let's say if I know none of you folks will because you're attending our webinar today, uh, which is excellent. But for folks that are not here attending the webinar today, if they happen to not get to their graduation report until, say, oh, mid-October, and then they want to mark kids as graduated, um, that is unfortunate. Um, we will not be able to do anything about that. We'll already be moving along with our reporting. So the best they could do in that case would be to put in a one day enrollment to mark them as a graduate in for the, the following year. Um, but that would that would that would be sad. And so but I don't think that will happen to any of you folks, like I said, because you're here with us today. So And I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, oh, someone was, um, they were curious that uh, the student's cohort was determined earlier than ninth grade. Um, I'm not sure where you may have heard that, but for our purposes, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, our graduation cohorts are just determined by high school enrollments. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, when you guys are enrolling students at your own local systems you might be assigning cohorts like way back in you know first grade fifth grade or something like that for various things you're keeping track of but once again we're only talking about state reporting right now um, wh whatever you guys want to do on your own side is totally fine with us it makes sense to me to assign cohorts earlier but for what we're talking about here today and certifying a state graduation report uh, cohorts are determined uh, in their first high school enrollment And um, on the note of cohort, um, this is just an aside that you guys will will uh, find very helpful. We are just getting it put into Neo. I think it might be going even later today or Thursday. Um, you will be able to see the students cohort that we've assigned uh, on your attending student details report, as well as the resident student report and out of district placement reports. Uh, so those three kind of informational ones. Um, you guys will actually be able, there'll be a new cohort year column, I believe it'll be called on that report. So you won't have to, um, you know, make guesses when you're um, enrolling students. Uh, well, you will need to enroll them to see them on the report, but uh, you'll know what cohort we've set them at um, well in advance of the graduation report opening, you know, July 1st, because that's kind of sometimes you guys will have some surprises there where you go, oh, uh, this student is, you know, supposed to graduate last year. Okay. 
Um, so you'll be able to see those in advance, which I think will be very helpful. It's something uh, people have been asking for for a while, and we finally have made it happen. So uh, you can look for that on those other reports starting for uh, this next school year. But obviously, you already see uh, the cohorts for all your kids now because the graduation reports open. So. Uh, yep, the three reports, uh, it's going to be the attending student details. Which once again, that report just every single enrollment and enrollment change you've made in synergy in a given school year. So that's the, the big one shows, you know, the log of everything. It's going to be on that one. It's also going to be on the out of district placement report. So if you guys are the responsible district for a student, but they are attending another school that is not in your SAU, uh, that report will have it. And as well as the resident student report, which is any resident student that you are not responsible for. So students that are going to say a charter school, or now the charter school is the responsible unit, but they're still a resident from your town. Uh, those students show on that report. So those are the three that we're adding it to. We have one more slide too, don't we? Yep. Got to plug our social medias as always. So if you, uh, if you guys are just, you know, just love, love hearing all of our information, you know, feel free to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter or, or X rather. Do we need to, we probably need to update our logo there. Don't we, Ali? Elon would be very, uh, very unhappy with us. But yeah, I think that will do it, everybody. And you know, if you have any questions or anything comes up, um, you know, shoot us an email at the help desk. Give us a call. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward with this one, though. Um, you know, make sure that your your kids are marked uh, graduated in synergy. They'll get pulled over to the report. Should be good to go. So, yeah, thanks again, everybody, and I uh, hope you have a good rest of the week there.